Hey guys, it's Mr. Jack and Triple Zero here, back with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be looking at a modded map called Puget Island right here. So this island, it's a small island located in the Puget Sound in Washington State, and it's a temperate rainforest, this biome is, and we're going to be going right to it at the default spawn, as it says so. Alright, we got ourselves loaded into the map here, and right now it's currently raining pretty big raindrops. Let's look at the splashes around here. Wait till we get a close... Yeah, there's all these big splashes of rain out here. And of course, it's, uh... Looks like evening hours, it looks like. And once you load in, you're just spawned in in a... Looks like an axis road, or an uh, if a paved road. It's just like a little off-roading in a trail right here. It just kind of leads to an off-road area and like some beaches and like a little hut there. And you just lead up to here to get to the, one of these two main roads of the actual island. Is this this road does loop to the island? This main road here, including here, you get some of the little like townships and villages in this map. On the right here, this is a looks like a quarter or a half mile drag strip down here. It's pretty basic. There's no like tree lighting. It's just the two lanes for your drag strip and the ending and that's it and of course you got your little uh, bus shelter there if you want to do some bus routes so first off let's just drive out drive forward and see what this is so we're on the main road of the island and we come up to here this this church here and then you come up to an intersection but let's just keep going straight and out here you kind of got some like good sized homes right here. Looks like pretty fitting for a suburban a suburban setting. And you got this random silver fire hydrant that should be red. And it looks like these buildings kind of remind me of uh, what? East Coast USA? Like some of these buildings in the cities and villages there. And out here it looks like your abandoned warehouse or garage straight ahead. Including some of these places, they look like almost ramshackly to abandon right here. And you got this random dumpster with a uh, with a barrier right there. I don't know what's really important there. And you got an excavator just sitting right there. Nothing much around here. And you got this little water tower right there. And then we make a right, and we just made a big circle. And there's really nothing much around here, but I know there's another access road that gets you to another part. Can I turn? Okay. So get another access road to another part of the city. And out here, it's nothing but the road that just leads to here. I think this is one of them. And you got this gas station here. This really reminds you, yep, Beam and G regular premium and diesel, straight from East Coast USA. Just a direct ripoff. And out here, the road just abruptly ends, and you got this little, like, plaza that just leads into some several homes, businesses, offices, and a bus shelter just conveniently placed right there. And out here, this is where the access road I was talking about. It's a, it's a mixture between asphalt and gravel, but this is the off-road. It's... On the outskirts of town, including right here, you got your dirt roads, but I'll get into that a little bit later in the video, including here too. And out here is just a good sized lake that hugs around these gravel, uh, the gravel roads here, and we can cross here, right? Yep, we can cross through the lake and out to the dirt road, and we got, we got some steep banking right there. But I know this is pretty a fair truck for off-roading, but I wouldn't really use it that much unless I'm a complete idiot by doing that and almost throw myself off into the ocean, just like that. And you got some shrubs and grass just magically growing right there. And yes, this is quite of a, a semi-treacherous, whoa, treacherous off-road path here. I kind of like hit the shrub right there, almost thought I was about to break the axle and I need to slow down a little bit to avoid crashing. And you gotta jump right there. And I'm like, driving like I'm in a world class a WRC, the World Rally Car Championship, and I did crash into a tree. Can I back up? Maybe? 
Okay, get some grip down. And right here, it looks like a lake that's just evaporating. Can I... Can I come through here? Without... Well, I can. Let's see if I can find a clear... I think just a clear path. Like, straight ahead. Like, get through the trees. Gap in those trees there. And I can just see if I can cross the river in one piece of I'll drawing the engine. If not, then get a car off a snorkel. And, yeah, this is a evaporating lake. I have plenty of ground. Uh, there goes the doors. Just drenched the doors. Now we got the interior completely wet inside. Just dipped the car. Uh, not dipped the car. Uh, tipped the car over. Let all the water come out. Which would be unfortunate if you go through some heavy flooding like that in real life. But it's really nothing. It looks like the water is trying to overcome this gravel path here. Which is unfortunate. And out here you got some random like lifeguard watchtowers and a little dirt road that just loops around this particular like uh, section of the island. It kind of leads you, I'll kind of show you. This dirt or uh, gravel road, it's not really that much. It just loops you back to where I was at. You got the road down here and it just, wait. Yeah, it does loop to you from right here down right there and out where I'm at right here. It's really, not that much of a drive. It's just a long cut. That's what some people call it. And still not even major here. Just more life to uh, watchtowers, sand, this little shack and hut. And up ahead will be your pimped out drag race. Well, convenient. You got a parking lot there. Like a makeshift parking lot. And we got some air. And as soon as we come up up this row, let's make us jump right here. Well, fine jump. And this is where we all start. Right about here. Where, where we started for our spawn point. And I was about to say, right here is a little drag strip. You got this little gate here, but it's staying up. Out here, just look to some basic bleachers. This drag strip track. And up here, this car's truck's pulling to the left. I would say up here is the starting line for the drag strip. Say they're just tires, but there's no tree lighting, which is pretty unfortunate. How can you tell that both of you guys are on the line, perfectly on the line, like right here, and then you go? How can you tell? If you're equal and you just go, just get a, a, a person there and just tell them three, two, one, go. I think it's how it goes. So I do got two trucks set up here. I got the D15 with the 5.5 liter V8 engine, not the 4.6 liter, which is a stock one that they always give you. And on the right right here is my custom automation car, the Imperium, the GMC Imperium single cab, the loud and obnoxious one, which uh, I think... For the mufflers, I think I only have, what is that, uh, straight through, and that's it. And it, the, the decibel rating is like 64 or 62 decibels, which is obnoxiously loud. It's like, it kind of sounds like some badass diesel engine that's like straight piped or something. So what we're going to be doing out here is try to get a drag race with my, uh, my D-Series truck here and see what kind of engine or adjustments are needed in order to beat this 3.5 liter V6 Imperium truck here, this lightweight truck. I know this is a heavy duty truck, but this is more like for a lightweight truck, like a UTE, like that you kind of see in Australia. Because it kind of does got the Ute type uh, body style, that you see in those types of countries, like the Subaru Baja. So right here, we're going to be doing this simple drag race with the Imperium. I'm just going to let this one accelerate by itself. We're going to freeze physics here. Hold the accelerator button and hit the tab key to switch vehicles. And now the Imperium is trying to accelerate with the f f uh, physics frozen. And now I'm going to accelerate with this truck here in three, two, one, and go. And here we off. And I'm also timing myself here. I think this is a quarter mile stretch. We're going to see how long does it take for. And it's hitting the wall, the AI is hitting the wall, and uh, how long does it take for me to finish this drag? Right? Here. 
Zero eight seconds. Zero sixteen point zero eight seconds. What's CDAI? Nine hundred mile an hour. Dead. Me. Dead. And this car is unbreakable. So let's tell you to stop accelerating. And yep, the engine and drive shaft is totally destroyed. While this guy, he can still drive. Just watch. Maybe? Did I lost both wheels? No, I didn't. Let's uh, let's drag this out of here. See if this will work. Just, I think I'm totally stuck. Yeah, I'm, I'm super stuck. I'm not like stuck, but super stuck. I can't even get out of here. Maybe so. But uh, save the car, save the truck, save our trucks, please. Get it, get this out of here. Hold on, get the get the free cam. Well, this is gonna take a while. Now we're gonna kick things up a notch. Right now. I have a stage two supercharger. I don't know what the the boost is on here, but let's see if this hopefully has the ability to pass this truck somehow without blowing the engine or just shooting ourselves, like wiping ourselves out, banging around these barriers and make this an unfair drag race and calling it quits. So we're just gonna do another one here. Same thing, get the parking brake out for either one of us. Freeze physics, hold the accelerator, switch to me. And we're gonna be starting in Three, two, one, drive. And, oh my god, and torque damage. I didn't even pay attention to my boost. <laughs> well, let's take control. All right, the time for that one was 14 seconds, 33 milliseconds for the Imperium. And let's just drive us off like last time and well, we went through one tree. That thing flipped over. Big time. Let's let's see. What's the roll angle? Or how does this roll over? Let's roll over like a, a 50 mile an hour roll over. Like right here. Maybe. Is it because the sand like put too much grip on the wheels? And bogged it down and flipped it over? I think it's what the truck did. It flipped over probably when it bogged down and tried to get too much grip on the wheels and it just flipped right over, no problem. Like, I understand if it's like an SUV where you're like moose trailing like this, like back and forth. It didn't there. Let's see. Uh, it tried to roll, but it wasn't noticeable. But let's double check the boost. The PSI boost on the truck. Alright, this is stage two, and we're just gonna go with it right now. 20 pounds. Over torque limit. Yep, it's 20 pounds. Uh, what if we drop this to a stage one? I thought a stage two would be like, maybe 15 or 12 pounds or something. That ought to be even, like, not even that great. Let's see, stage one. Let's try a stage one performance block two and see if this works out. If not, we can just go to the stock long block. Let's just do stage one everything. It's a block, engine block, and the supercharger. Let's just see how it comes off the line. About 9.6 pounds of boost. And I don't see any engine problems just yet. All right, we hit the line at 107. What would happen if I would just use the stock engine block? Will it be any difference? Like, will there be any uh, torque issues or something? Let's see. Alright, here we go. We're accelerating right now. Same thing. 9.6 pounds of pressure on the, the supercharger. It is going a little bit slower. And we hit the line at exactly 100 miles an hour. So let's try... It. Okay. I'll say, let's try this again with the drag race. We're gonna... Turn ourselves here. We're gonna get the parking brake out for either one of us. Freeze physics and accelerate. Tab and here we go. Three, two, one, go. Here we go. And it's now I'm faster. And AI is gonna bounce off the wall. Yeah, I got the upper hand. Where our time is. 12 seconds, 83 milliseconds. 12.83. Let's just keep going. Let's see if I can flip this over like I did with the sanded. Here we go. Deadly roll over. 
for either one of us. The truck's still going? Nope. Without that tree, I thought he would just drive off into the river. Alright, let's just make, let's just try something else. Let's swap out a different vehicle, and we can just continue touring with, uh, so, well, I think there's a, a seaport in the area too. Let's just take a look at that. So, we're gonna, now, we're gonna take a break of the automation cars for right now. Let's take out the ETKI series, and let's jump in with the, use the Sport Evolution. Alrighty. We're now in our wannabe Mercedes, I think it's a 190 Evo. That it really represents in real life. I know it's just a wing, just resembles that type of Mercedes. And, did we just hit an invisible wall? Hold up. We just hit an invisible wall. Yes, there's an invisible wall right here. Why? Just, why? I don't know, let's just, uh, recover that, and get ourselves back into town, and getting quite a bit of wheel spin, especially for this type of car. Alright, let's just slow down up here, try to drift here, and too intense, too intense, nope! Engine is off, restarting. <laughs> yep, don't even drift in an automatic. Enough said. Uh, is it me, or is my suspension damaged from making that type of drift? Uh. Is it me or is that the camber? Like, on the left side of the wheel, it's like trying to go inward. Like, inward even more when I'm trying to turn. And yeah, that's why it's not even steering that well. They got to get a fresh vehicle. So right here, I just make a. Oh, it's just deck street after. I may make a left turn. Just like that. And this is just a long, scenic route here. And let's just get a fresh vehicle. I can't even take that. that camber looking mess up with the suspension of the vehicle. Yeah, now we're fine. We're just getting some oversteer and wheel spin on these corners while we're going at pretty high speed. And it's nothing much, but it's just a scenic route of just this road. It's not enough specific, just some blind corners over it. Wow. I wouldn't expect that. And let's see if we can... Camera. Camera. Like pinball up the side of these trees and get up to the lake. And the camera's going much. And we're going off road. And we're leaking up in the radiator. And. Rip. Alright. Try this again. Nice and smooth. And I should have hit the insert button to, uh. Recover the vehicle from where I was at. I think could use this car. It's auto control and everything. Alright, from where we left off. It's got some, like, semi-blind, kind of some blind corners, kind of where you go up, like, this hill, you think, you're, like, you're gonna turn left or right. It's just, like, got that little suspense moment, thinking you have to turn right here when you get on top of the hill. Like, like there's no, like, left turn or right turn signs. You just see a turn right, like, the last second, like, you're driving first person. And I kind of, like, kind of show you almost, like, you're going on top of the hill, getting some back wheel spin. I was trying to show you until that just ruined the moment. Like, you're on top of the hill, like this, and you think you have to turn, like, right there. Like, turn right, right, right there. Kind of, like, get that suspense moment. If you're, like, living on some windy hills, like, near mountainsides, or just rolling hills like that, and you have to get used, if you're, and you're not used to that. And that was a blind corner I didn't pay attention to. It's not much of a drive here and you got that church from earlier again and I shouldn't be looking over there and we come back from where we started our spawn point it's not too much of a drive to be honest and on this left side of the road I haven't really gone down here I think it's just a yay sized road in a town yeah that's some dude's driveway that dude's house and it goes another driveway to saw at the last second and you get this off-roading spot there, which I'm definitely have to go through you guys shortly. And you got this bridge here, cross under, and we're at the... Oh yeah, that's a spot from earlier, trying to tour you uh, around the beaches, that's that road. And that's the little parking lot structure, watchtowers, and way over there is a the track race. Alright, back from where we started, and we're going to change up the vehicle up again. 
But this time, let's just pick something yay in particular. Maybe the... Uh, let's jump in with the Gavril Romer and jump in with the... Let's try the Sport version. And we'll drive straight ahead with the other village and the seaport, which is not that far away. If you continue straight down the road here, this is one of the roads here that will take you to another spot. There's another village just right up down the road. And can I make it through this gap? Maybe not. Uh. Wrapped around a tree. And drive shaft is semi broken. And I thought we we're still pulling power on this vehicle with the drive shaft broken. And let's just take these corners nice and simple just so we won't have to make this a crash compilation video of BMG. And not much, just this dude's cabin and some apartment complexes right here. It looks yay done. It's not the best, but I think these are just some like basic models, like from a different map probably. Guarantee it is. And it looks like some Hawaiian tropical home right there. Which I don't know if that's suitable for the state of Washington. Some pimped out town home, which you see in some rich neighborhoods. And there's some typical semi-high end home. Some middle class home. Another upper middle class home. More and more and none. I'm home, daddy. Alright, so behind me, one of these roads here, don't hit the tree is one of the roads that takes you to the industrial and looks like a seaport area of this map. So you come around here and there's a tree in the middle of the road, really? Yeah, that's a tree in the middle of the road. What kind of cut rate map is this? I don't know if the city should get involved, just cut this tree down because this is a big time hazard. What if somebody drives here where they're just not like distracted but they don't see it and boom get themselves killed right there but i know there's a turn but still you got to consider that once in a while on city planning back in the car again and we make a one more street we make a right onto this road try to drift this thing uh kind of weak but good enough for a vehicle like this and right here we make yes we make a right here and this is where you approach to the seaport and industrial zone of this map. We just keep driving until we just see, yep, stuff like this. This bus stop. The loads of stuff. Warehouses. A house slash business and a BMG gas station. Let's just crash in to see if we can explode. Damn it, Michael Bay, why'd you include this? And abandoned vehicles, wood, a uh, poorly built hazardous staircase or ramp, I meant. More wood, it looks like Detroit Junior of this side of town. This is Detroit Junior. All this load here, abandoned looking warehouses, scrawny stuff, trailers just sitting here, grass growing magically. Yeah, I call this Detroit, but there's some hope of just that gr patch of grass growing. I, I, there's some hope out of that. Ain't nothing much, but just speeding around, trying to drift around this corner, which honestly would be a good drifting spot if I know how to drift in an SUV. And over here, it's kind of a little bit strange that... Can I fit here? Oh, you drop down. So you drop down here, it looks like. And you just got this open space, like, right... Here, like where you should get some like big container ship or something that can just fit through here. I don't know if there's a container ship mod, but I doubt it. But I know there's that one, the ship on here, the HMS, what, the Pembroke, and you can just slap it right here and just say, this is your cargo ship and this is your load that you're getting. And what the hell just happened? I just black screen. Uh, let me double check if OBS is okay. Hold on real quick. Well, I guess I was alarmed by Windows 7 going into basic mode for like no reason at all. And uh... Yeah, this is the end of this section here. Like, for your cargo hold. Let's just drop down. Say screw you, Gavril. Uh, where's the bottom of the f ocean floor? 
I was about to turn off the engine before it hydrolocked, because I don't know if it would work out like that. And we're still dropping. Where does the Ocean 4 lead to? Is it... Is it even... Does it even exist? And I think we already... Uh, I think we already discovered the Ocean 4. Right? Yeah, we already discovered the Ocean 4 already. I can't even see it. Oh my god! Okay, that just gave everybody a heart attack, including me. I to say, what would happen if you turn off the engine and just drop down? Okay, we just skateboard off of here. It's just still hydrolocks. We're skateboarding off of this. It just says it's hydrolocking. Got an idea. It's already dipped in the water, and we just oil starvation, and we just F7 it. Just starved of oil. Okay, let's flip you over. So you can stop complaining. Just like that. Well, it... It does work out great. That's cool. Alright, let's check out the off-roading part of... Of this map, and then we can probably wrap this up if I come up to something new or not. Alright, here we are at one of the starting points of the off-roading section here of this map. And let's just jump in with the Abishu Hopper, the wannabe Jeep Wrangler, straight out of the 419, which, unfortunately, the late Marchoni wanted to get it out of the city of Toledo, which would have been a big uh, downfall for the city's economy if he would have done that. So first of all, enough for that, let's see, this is a four-cylinder model, a mid-trim, base six-cylinder. Let's just get, let's get a manual mid-trim model of this Hopper. All right, here's our wannabe Ibishu Hopper Jeep Wrangler. And what's nice tree, just drive up ahead and see what we can come up to at this off-roading part of this map. And we already hit a jump. That's unexpected. And we're getting to some boggy parts of the mud. Let me put this on realistic. And so I can shift myself, okay? Alright. I already got the controller bind set up. X is the upshift and square is the downshift. And here we go. Good to right. Let's first gear it. Get some power down. And second gear it. And probably have to first gear it again, right? No, we can just go up here. This thing's got enough torque. And we're getting some driftiness of the vehicle. And we're already sliding around again. And slide around again, nothing new. And we're gonna come to a downhill, yep. Alright, let's take it nice and slow. Okay, we got that corner. And this bank right here. Took that nice and carefully and slow. And we go up to some uphill. And this Jeep don't even care. Or this is Bishu Hopper, I should forget I forgot it's a beam and G vehicle, not a real life vehicle. Even though it resembles one, but it doesn't say Jeep Wrangler. Which it's true. And hit the brakes. Hit the brakes. Can I handbrake? Nope. And can I get through here? No. Nope. I gotta get out there. And reverse it. So uh, some hairpin turn, to be honest. Alright, let's just second gear it. So we're not gonna, like, burn up the engine saying, Oh, you're over-revving it. The uh, engine's damaged. Key careful. Like, we don't want none of that to be happening of this drive. And we really get some speed here. Let's see if we can 40. Nope. Nope. Rip. Rip. Yep. I was about to say, let's get some torque flowing and then make this right here. Because this little intersection right there, it just takes it downhill and you go down at the end of the trail even faster. Let's just take the scenic route and see how I can take with this off-road road part. And that tree, I thought that would be like a solid model, like I was about to get my roof cut off by that. But luckily it wasn't. Usually trees like that, like branches, they don't really have solid models where you're going to hit it and your car or truck is just going to be screwed up for the rest of the day. And now I come to some pavement. Let's run through it. They get to the Rally Cross Championship. Yep, I got zero hopes of being a, a WRC driver. All right, still nothing, but we got that... Is that the evaporated lake? Yep, we're going over the evaporated lake right here where... You can 
across most cars over. Uh, if you got like driving a supercar that you can import from automation or like an SBR4, I doubt it'll make it over that lake. Unless you come in at like 70 miles an hour and the water would slow you down quite a bit, but I don't know if you, you, there's probably no guarantee of making it. And you got a lake here that flows into the ocean. Alright. So that ends that little trail, and there's really nothing much to explore. And I think this is the one I just went over last time, right? I think so. Let me double check. If I'm right or wrong. And wait, we got some rocks here. I think I don't think I already went through here. I'm about to track up. Nope. Nope. All right, that ends there. Let's just jump over where we went last time and see if. No, let's climb up and then drive down. Let's just do it the other way. Let's climb up these rocks. Holy crap. I know these huge rocks would actually slow you down, but not these. Nope. I think neutral does say, uh, take the job. Do I have to, like, get this down to a low transfer skier? Transfer case? Alright, try a low and... No, we're stuck in the mud. Right? Nope. Uh... Over rev risk. Okay, thank you. You were kind of stuck. And try to ease up on the throttle and try to avoid some of these rocks. Take this head on. Nope. Don't even take rocks head on. But we're getting a lot of wheel spin and get this out of there. So the mouse curse, you won't say range box 24 7. And I thought I was actually smoking the engine. It's actually just tire smoke. Because I'm over revving the engine, I thought that would it'd be me like actually tearing up the engine. And we got up there nice. And third gear is not the choice. Get first gear and nope. We already got four of our wheels down spinning, but it's just the dirt is just screwing me up. I think we're stuck on a rock, yeah. Um I think, I don't think, hold on, let me use Arcade and try to squirm us through it, yep. Uh, probably. Maybe. So, yep. I think we're good. Alright, back to uh, uh, realistic. Take this nice, simple. Watch these big rocks. I don't even know small rocks like these could actually stop a vehicle like this. Just try not to over rev it that much. Even though I am, but I'm trying to get the power down and some of the wheels to actually grip on the road. And we're sitting sideways. Not good. Still not good. This is treacherous. Yeah, we're still going downhill, like slightly. And let's reset. Hit the parking brake, stop, and go. I think we're just gonna do a little cheat right here and try to not fit there. Try this again. Break. Get some power down. Go. Nope. I thought it actually worked going from second to first like that, but it just makes it stupid. What if I change it to high? A high range box. And then put the power down. I. Don't think so. We're just getting rear wheel spin. Wait, are we getting all four down? Huh. Hold up. Now we're getting all four down. I think I was actually clicked the axle. That could be why. I just, I just clicked it on, on accident, and here we go. Now we're actually taking it up a notch. Alright, try to cut over. Wow, and we're we're overheating. Yes, we're overheating. Our hopper is overheating. Try to slide over. And we're right there. Right there where we want to be. Yeah, all four spinning. Uh, what if low would work out? I swear if low works out. E kind of. Alright, good. Alright, once we get to the top, 
we gotta at least cool the vehicle down. I think I might as well just respawn at the top. And then... Go from there. Alright, so I decided to get a fresh new hopper. And now for the last and final part. Well, put this on high range. We're gonna drive down this mountain and into that little parking area by the church. So let's drive down. Hopefully we can get this thing in one piece without breaking this vehicle apart. These rocks are gonna be a pain. First of all, let's do some first person action. Get in the driver's seat. See how it... Yep. That's how it works. Uh, I can't see. I am amazing at this. And wow, we're getting some dirt inside the vehicle. Didn't know the vehicles can do that in real life. Ow. We're climbing on grabby rocks. Dot org. Alright, got this section. And I'll drop down an E treachery part two. Can't break. Just bob over on these rocks and jump over like this and like this. Here we go. And now it's just climbing this last treacherous section. I thought we still had to drop down and ooh wow we got stuck for a minute. I mean stuck where I was hitting the gas pedal and like all four tires were all the way down. Hold up. And oh the bumper. Wow the bumper was getting involved on that rock. Alright back to first person with the driver's seat. Alright kind of cut through and get over these rocks like always. Like, not always? Try not to over rev this like I did last time. Cut through the tree, or around the tree, and back again. Alright, take it easy, cause who knows, this thing could actually deflate a tire for some stupid reason. And we're stuck again. Back up. Back up in a menacing way. Take first. It's just kind of ridiculous how these rocks are literally stopping you. These small rocks. And we're gonna bank out. And bank. And we're semi leveled out. And now we got this downhill stretch. And we just got some side damage. I'm surprised. Holy crap. Yeah, put this in the XD Beast You Hopper commercial. Why don't you? I'm already bouncing on these rocks like. It's something. Something for competition to be thrown off to the trash can. I think this is the ending right here. This little... Excellent. I think right here is just the ending. This little pit in the excavator. Yep. That's uh, the ending where I was supposed to be. And just to make things even worse, let's flip ourselves over. And too much force. Way too much force. Where am I at? 90 or 100? 75. Do a simple thing and... There we go. Alright. Let's just drive this thing at the end. No need to go to first person. Let's just gun it. Gun it. Gun it. Over rev. Oh, sorry. Crashes the gas station one more time. Michael Bay! Whatever. Let's just trash this thing. Try to just do something. Let's get a first. Never mind. Let's get a first. Well, let's say get a first person crash. Let's crash at this guy's house. Right here. All right. Slow it down. You get a camera, and we're gonna call this quits right here. All right. Camera is set. We get a 60 mile an hour collision, and I can't see Jack if I were to put a first person. And boom. Just perfectly in the guy's house. Front bumper is just jiggling, and the engine and radiator and coolant is just jiggling around. Put this back to arcade. And slow motion done. And back to real time and back to here. Can you still put down power? Oh my god, I just want to kill this vehicle off. Drive shaft broken. Still going. I don't care. We're still... We're still trying to kill this thing. No matter what. Here we go. All smoking. Put this back to arcade. 
And let's just try to crash this tree up ahead. Alright, let's bring the slow motion. Do eight times slow mo. Let's not do a camera angle. Let's just take the shot here. 30 mile an hour crash. Head on, this tree. Boom! Drive shaft, rear drive shaft broken. This thing's going nowhere now. This thing's going nowhere. Yep, we officially killed the car. And yes, this will now do it for this video of the BMG Drive here at Puget Island. I almost said Puget Sound. Puget Sound is in real life, but this map is Puget Island. So this wraps up our video here. So this has been Mr. Jack and Triple Zero. I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.